The Oscar nominations were announced this week. For our younger viewers, the Oscars was this award show people used to care about. Stacey Abrams was photographed maskless around school children. And when she goes to school, she sits next to everyone in the class. A pub in England that has been open for a thousand years is closing. Queen Elizabeth said she's sad and still remembers when they built it. The Biden administration is planning to give away free crack pipes, but don't worry, you have to show your Vax card in order to get one. Scientists recorded wild chimpanzees performing first aid on each other. Sadly, they still haven't discovered healing crystals. All this and more on The Bee Weekly. <laughs> I don't know. I usually well, I get like a welcome to the B Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> this is going well. <laughs> hey, we're hanging out with Jarrett Lemaster. French. It is. Okay. Yes. And uh, who are you? Uh, so I'm a I'm an actor. I'm a pastor at a local church, and um, where well, I'm a worship pastor. I don't think that really counts. Yeah, Actually, that's it's true. Not. Yeah, that's one of those. Yeah, it's kind of like a. Pseudo Fake pastor, pastor. Say quasi, yeah. a quasi pastor, and you've been in a lot of our most popular sketches lately. Yes, and that's been very fun for me as well. Yeah, it's sort of a dream come true. We love the actually. accents you do. You did a great Russian accent for yeah. the uh, the murder on gun control. Yes, thank you. That was sort of last minute. I kept asking if you guys really wanted that, and apparently you did. We did, and you're really good. good at saying all this and more. <laughs> 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 You know, sometimes I need to prepare. <laughs> well, I got some uh, big news this week. 15-year anniversary, the day this episode comes out. Oh, oh wow. Just, it's, yeah, my wife, obviously. But yeah. Wait, oh, 15-year anniversary, know, not of yes. the Babylon Bee. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the Babylon Bee is only uh, six years old. Actually, on March 1st, it'll be six years old. So. You guys going to Red Lobster or something? Uh, with the Babylon Bee? <laughs> with the wife? No, with the wife. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going, actually, we're going to go to a, a cool speakeasy in San oh, Diego. Nice. Yeah, and they have a few of them down there. That's so cool. I can't tell you awesome. where it is, so. Knock it's three times. Speakeasy. That kind of thing, yeah. Whisper I hear love. there's like a, like a wall of kegs and you have to like find it and push oh. it back. And oh, that's cool. Like, yeah. That is cool. I think they operated, you know, during the pandemic and stuff and they're still going. So that's fun. We were sent by Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Joe yeah. sent you and he slide yeah. a little. <laughs> that's right. I, I've always wanted to do that. I don't think they have the eye hole thing. That's yeah. kind of sad. I just said. Is but, a keg uh, the traditional 15th anniversary gift? The keg is the, the, <laughs> like the, the paper. I did, the, I did buy my wife a nice 15-year anniversary gift, but I can't surprise her with anything because if I buy something on Amazon, she immediately gets the ding on her phone like something's purchased on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I, apparently she signed up for like Truebill or one of these services that tells you when people spend money out of your account. And so I bought mm. her anniversary gift and she immediately calls me, what did you just buy for, you know, X amount of dollars? So I'm yeah. like, dang it. <laughs> like I can't, uh, I can't surprise her. So with your wife controls the money in the household. That's correct. Yeah. Oh. So does mine. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I it literally, if my wife like passed away or something, I would have absolutely no way. To, I wouldn't know how to pay the mortgage. I wouldn't right. know how to pay the cars. I, I wouldn't. I just had this conversation this. like right. a day ago with my wife. Wow. And she, that exactly this conversation. She's like, you literally would be lost. It'd be like that scene in, in Ants. Remember oh, when like the they, leaf they, falls they, in front of him? The he's stick like, falls and everybody I'm lost. <laughs> scrambles <laughs> around. <laughs> that, that would be me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too, me too. <laughs> well, we have a subscriber dare this week. Hey, Babylon Bee listeners, we should all agree that parents have a fundamental right to direct the upbringing of their children. But this right is under increasing attacks from public school indoctrination. If you've got kids in school, you've experienced that. I know I have. Some schools have enacted policies that treat students differently based on race and compel students to affirm and support ideas contrary to their deeply held beliefs. Indoctrinating students with these ideas is harmful to children and it neglects the fundamental rights that parents have to raise their children according to biblical principles. This stuff gets me fired up because I've got kids and it totally sucks when your school is all uh, indoctrinating them on all that crazy stuff. Our friends at Alliance Defending Freedom, though, are challenging this indoctrination and threat to parental rights, but they can't do it alone. They need your help. Preserving parental rights protects the future of our children, and that is why it is vital that you join us in supporting ADF. Just go to adflegal.org slash Babylon B and make a tax-deductible donation to ADF's Freedom Fund to ensure they have the resources necessary to continue their challenges in court. All the way to SCOTUS, if necessary. We've seen what happens when Americans stick together. We can make a difference. And with your gift to ADF, we can help protect parental rights. 
I personally can't think of anything more important. This is the forefront of the battle for our civil rights in, in these days. Join us. Please go to adflegal.org slash Babylon B and make your donation today. That's adflegal.org slash Babylon B. One more time in case you weren't paying attention, adflegal.org slash Babylon B. This is Subscriber Day. This is from Big Sam Horton. Which is, <laughs> I hope that's his real name. Big Sam Horton. Howdy, this is Big Sam. <laughs> How else would Big Sam greet you? Brother? Howdy. Howdy. This is Big Sam. Big Sam here. Uh, I will gladly become a subscriber if y'all will conduct a theological analysis of the lyrics to the song A Dog's Breakfast by the Christian band Tourniquet. Hmm. Mormons will need to leave the room. Uh, <laughs> do we have any more? Mormons here? I don't think we do. Uh, keep on doing the Lord's work, Big Sam. Big Sam. <laughs> he signs it twice. <laughs> Big Sam here, signing off. Tourniquet, that's like Big a... Sam. That's old that's school, That's an right? old one, yeah. yeah I, guess I, I remember even, those guys. I don't think I listened much to them. Yeah. They were kind of, what are they, like in the Project 86 style? They were like death metal. Okay. Oh. Tourniquet is like a, it's like a, one of those yeah. kind of tough sounding things. But <laughs> well, it's like you're, you're, it's like you're, yeah. you're <laughs> like, Band-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> Surgery. Yeah, metal band. Thrash, progressive, and neoclassical metal. I should check him out. Sounds like right up my alley. Sounds like right up the, hmm. So here's a, let's, we'll, we'll go through the verses, I guess. Here's a dog's breakfast, uh, Christian band. Listen to Ron H Hubbard's son. Dad was con man number one through <laughs> black magic dabbling and drugs. His books were born. Dianetics say I am a reincarnated Thetan god. If I buy E-meter, M-E-S-T-A-O-K-L-R-H says Jesus never reached potential grade. Hmm. Okay, so, so, so you just go through so debunking, these are, debunking different religions. These are just like the, first, yeah. it's an apologetic song. Okay, so this that's Scientology. So uh, no, uh, no, that's Calvinism. Act the first. Oh, one. that's Calvinism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the famous Calvinist L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I can't say I understood every reference in that, but I get the Thetan thing. The only yeah, one I don't dynamics. know is the M E S T. That's, that's the only M E S T. M-E-S-T. That? Oh, so the E-meter, yeah, that's like the, you do the, e, the that's uh, where they emotional test meter. Like, yeah. That's right. M-E-S-T is an acronym for, for Scientology, matter, energy, space, and time. Got it. So, These guys did some research for this yeah, song. Yeah, this is, a, this is solid. Okay, so solid. We're going to say Good. Good 10 out of verse. 10 on the first verse. Yeah. You guys want to take, uh, oh, Jared, why don't you take yeah. verse two? Jehovah's Witness make the claim, the only prophet of today but every prophecy was fake, and so they upped the date. As they read their Bible wrong, John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was God, true in God. God. It was a God. It was a God. Yeah. True in God is of Babylon. The church is of the beast. 1,444 and one, and all that follow, Jonah dabs that cannot go to heaven. I don't know okay. how that, it didn't really rhyme at the end, but... I like how we're just falling into like a rap cadence. Even well, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like a, li a limerick. It was like a limerick. Like there, oh, once, there the once was a witness. Yeah. Uh, make the claim the only prophet of today. <laughs> there I once was it. a Jehovah's <laughs> Witness <laughs> from Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> from Nantucket. Ah <laughs> oh, man, you stole my joke. I was gonna do it. Yeah. Oh, I think that, that's good. John one one. The Jehovah's Witnesses have the they yeah. Have the, the word was a God the in the New World God. translation. So okay, mm -hmm. I like that. They up the date, read their Bible wrong. So like the false prophecies of the beginning of the J Dubs, and then the hundred forty four thousand reference because uh, originally they said only hundred forty four thousand can go to heaven, and then they later said, well, that's like a metaphorical thing or something. It's a metaphor. Well, it's interesting because the Jehovah's Witnesses used to come to my house all the time, and I've confronted many Jehovah's Witnesses about John one one. And, uh, and I just suggest that they retranslated it. One guy, I was like, one guy translated this version. It's just intellectually mm -hmm. sort of dishonest. Like you need, to, you need a little bit more than that. Just one guy anonymously. And um, anyway, they don't come to my house anymore. I, I was going to say, do they like still go around? Letter. I used yeah. to like, they when, do. I, when I was growing up uh, in Pennsylvania, it happened every you know, a few weeks or a couple months. Now, yeah. like even in Pennsylvania, like I when I'm home, I don't see them going around as much anymore. Maybe you get blacklisted. Maybe I do. Blacklisted. You can. You can get marked up. They'd marked me off because I I would. They'd be like, hey, yeah, you, you want to talk about the Bible? You can I'm click like, on please come in. <laughs> yeah, please come into my house. They're like, please don't go talk to that guy. All right, so then we have the chorus. I was fooled again. I had made up my mind. The truth comes in styles. I was fooled again, wasting my time with life changing lies. Yeah. It makes it sound like that the the writer of this song like was a Scientologist. 
and he got fooled by that, and then he got out of that, and then he became a J Dub, and then he came out of that. So I'm interested uh, what his spiritual journey is in the rest yeah. of the song. Yeah, this is he's got a pedigree. Should I do this next? Yeah, one? take verse three. Uh, out. Myself, I love so much because the New Age teaches me the source of good and secrets lie within. If this present life ain't good, astral to the past one, dude. <laughs> you can make adjustments in your linear time zone. God is you, and you are God. So whatever you decide is right. Right. Nailed Sounds it. like the progressive Christian. <laughs> is that like New Agey beliefs? Yeah, it's like New Age, all the I guess. Yeah. Essential oils and yeah. healing crystals. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be updated with an Enneagram reference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, final one. Joseph Smith, a Mormon god, murdered men, condemned of fraud. An angel gave him golden plates, which no one ever saw. KC says that Christ was a lost sign of Satan on the cross, bore the devil's nature, and was born again in hell. They got a lot more to say about Mormons than the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> this was clearly this all a build-up for them to rip on. <laughs> yeah, this sounds personal. Mormons. Very yeah. personal here. Yeah. And was born again in hell. If you've got a little body, you can all become a god. Benny hinders true conversion. Christ is... Oh, now, now they're switching. I don't know. Is this like two oh, different verses? Oh, this seems like oh, a different yeah. verse. Oh, it's a different verse. Yeah. This is the progr- This is the. This um, is like the prosperity, prosperity gospel. Prosperity yeah. gospel. Benny hinders true conversion. Mm. Christ is not within. I have faith in my own faith because I'm a little God. I was fooled again. A message from God that I was only a fraud. I was fooled again. Truth and joy was inside, but it's only in Christ. I was fooled again by a spiritual force. Hey, they took that from DC Talk. <laughs> uh, that had disguised its source. I was fooled again by the Lord's latest mail, but a novel from hell. Just kind of fizzled out at the end there. I didn't. I didn't know where that was. Going. I think South Park has done an episode about each one of these verses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hell episode actually. They, yeah. yeah. Well, they have. Yeah, they have yeah. one where Cartman becomes like a prosperity preacher. They have uh-huh. one about Mormonism. That's they have right. One about Scientology. I don't know that they've done Jehovah's Witnesses on South Park. Mm. Yeah, they're they're not quite big enough. There's only 144,000 yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no. I give the I give the song an A grade theologically. I did get a little confused and lost at the end. Um, and I'll have to listen to it to see how much I like the guitar solos and stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's go to our Babylon B Banger of the Week. Banger of the Week. Top shared story of this week was uh, while watching The View in Hell, Hitler surprised to learn Holocaust wasn't about race. <laughs> I was a little worried this joke was too much of a hat on a hat, like the joke that the, the view is being shown in hell. <laughs> this is a great, but it turned out to be a nice little icing on the cake. Yeah. But Whippy Goldberg did make a comment in the context of the Tennessee school district decision to ban Moss. I don't know what that is. What that that is. the whole the Holocaust was not about race and actually involved two white groups of people. You know, just having a little dispute or something. Yeah, it's intersectional, guys. It's an intersectionality. White thing. on white crime. I don't know what her what is her motivation for this? Like what is her I do think it's that. I think it's the intersectional thing. Oh. She's trying to be true to the intersectional intersectional philosophy. Okay, yeah, because I didn't really even understand what her argument was. Uh, so she did issue an apology on social media the next day. I said the Holocaust wasn't about race and was instead about man's inhumanity to man, but it is indeed about race because Hitler and the Nazis considered Jews to be an inferior race. It's a pretty big part of the narrative. <laughs> yeah. I would say, yeah. That was it was part of the, it after the all. The whole reason <laughs> it was about race. That's right. Uh, she was suspended for, for two weeks from The View. She's reportedly furious Reports say reportedly, and uh, yeah, so good job, Whoopi. <laughs> <laughs> Do we think she'll be back again? I feel like they don't want I, to she, like. She's I, I don't think they'll again. fire her completely. No, no, no. Way. Yeah, yeah. The two week suspension. They're just hoping mm. it blows over, and then they bring her back. Oh, yeah. uh, Do you want to read our bomb of the week? <laughs> I'd love you? to. Bomb of the week. Yeah. Bomb of the week. Least shared and liked. All right. Sad. Very sad. Supreme Court to rule on affirmative action quickly before the new affirmative action justice gets there. <laughs> I didn't write this one, <laughs> just to be clear. I think, well, <laughs> I'm not I, laughing at my own joke. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's, it's generally a good observation. It's just it's worded very long. And, and that's also like I've seen mm. some version of that. Oh, going That around. observation was kind of. Yeah. But it, I don't think it's a bad Oh, but they, I didn't realize this was actually based on a real story that the Supreme Court is taking up two yeah. cases, one from Harvard, one from University of North Carolina about affirmative action. It literally came out the same week oh, that, okay. that Biden said he was going to pick a, a woman of color on the Supreme Court that they Got said it. they're taking okay. up the affirmative action case. Yeah. All right. I think if you didn't know about those affirmative action cases, this joke would not land. Yeah. And I didn't. So, yeah, And I many, still laughed at it. Many this. did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do some weekly news with Adam Yenser. Yeah, let's hope you heard about some of these stories. (laughs) Let's hope he doesn't bomb as hard as that story. (laughs) It's time for the weekly news with Adam Yenser. 
In order to discuss the conflict at the Ukrainian border, Vladimir Putin and French President Emmanuel Macron met at this table, which stretches from Russia to France. <laughs> that picture's insane. It is. <laughs> Georgia Democrat Stacey Abrams was photographed posing maskless with a group of school children while they all wore masks. Abrams claims she was only trying to prove that she has the hypocrisy it takes to be a Democratic governor. <laughs> she also offensively co-opted Native American culture by sitting Indian style. It's oh, yeah. a good choice. <laughs> The oldest pub in England, which has been open for a thousand years, is closing due to the financial strain of the pandemic. It's called Ye Old Fighting Cox, and it's so old that it was built before that name was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be clear, this bar survived for a thousand years, which means the government destroyed the economy worse over COVID than they did during the Spanish flu or the Black Plague. <laughs> <laughs> Although the CEO of Spotify said he will not cancel Joe Rogan's podcast, the platform has removed over 70 hours of Joe Rogan's content, which is roughly half of his Jordan Peterson interview. <laughs> I was going to say that's about one episode. That's yeah, that was a long episode. one. They talk and just <laughs> yeah, like, just keep even talking. when it's a guest that I like, I'm tired of them. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you now. Yeah. <laughs> Scientists at MIT have developed a new material that is stronger than steel, but as light as plastic. They plan to use the material to package scissors. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's the like Biden Star Trek. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. You can interject on it. No, it's like Star Trek. It's like, remember, uh, what was it? Uh, See-through aluminum? Yes, transparent Star aluminum. Yeah, transparent aluminum. And they found that they could make that. But it's so expensive. <laughs> See, now, you, now you've got me to talk about Star Trek. <laughs> no, no, it was the whales one. Yes. It was the one with the whales. All, well, all the windows on the Enterprise D, I don't know about the Enterprise right. A, but they're made with transparent <laughs> aluminum. Transparent. I'm not sure about yes. C either, but I do know. Yeah. And they, um, yeah. and the transparent aluminum scientists say that they could make that, right. but the cost of producing it is yeah. currently it's it like, makes it it's like, like desalinization. You, yeah, you couldn't you yeah. make it to the quantities to build like an Enterprise. An Enterprise. But, yeah. Now we just have, you know, what is it? Bezos' wiener-shaped ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there's metal enough to make yeah. an enterprise. Anyway. Uh, where are we at here? The Biden administration will begin funding the distribution of crack pipes to provide addicts a safe way to get high and, quote, advance racial equity. Biden announced the move by starting with, okay, so you know how minorities love crack? <laughs> And for Hunter Biden, the administration is also funding a special Parmesan pipe. <laughs> That's good, dude. For the first time ever, chimpanzees in the wild have been recorded performing first aid on each other, although the chimpanzees are more primitive than humans and will still treat the unvaccinated. <laughs> Several black Tesla employees have claimed that racism is rampant inside the company, which is surprising since they have an African-American CEO. <laughs> Ford is suspending production on some of its vehicles due to a microchip shortage. The microchip shortage has also caused Bill Gates to halt vaccine production. <laughs> <laughs> microchip shortage. Yeah. Anti-Semitic hate crimes in New York City were up 300% in January, mostly on the set of The View. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Davidson has started officially referring to Kim Kardashian as his girlfriend. Kim, on the other hand, says she's not quite ready to start calling him a comedian. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> the Oscar nominations came out this week, and the Best Actor nominees include Denzel Washington for The Tragedy of Macbeth, Benedict Cumberbatch for Power of the Dog, and Jussie Smollett for Pleading Not Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the weekly news. If you want to see the jokes I couldn't do on here, check out the canceled news on my YouTube channel. But Jesus is watching you. Yes. <laughs> but now, this week's edition of Stuff That's Good. All right, so we're going to talk about some stuff that we enjoy. Um, I couldn't decide, so maybe I'll just do two. I want to talk about my Zune HD that I just recently reacquired. I have a long and complicated history with MP3 players, and uh, I got a Zune HD because I was convinced that it was going to, to knock out the iPod. I also went for HD DVD and stuff, so I don't really have a very good track record with this stuff, but... Um, it's fun. I got my Zune HD because I thought maybe when I go to the gym, and yes, I do go to the gym for some of the people in here who don't think I do, uh, without constantly being interrupted because I like tend to lift one weight and then get a Slack message and then I, mm. yeah, I do this. So mm. I know that there are solutions like just hitting airplane mode or just having some personal discipline and not doing that. But, you know, for me, it's nice to just have a little device. I had a – my son wanted to uh, – 
my son wanted to use my Zune and he was like, can I take your Zune to class to listen to music? And I was like, sure. And he, so he just grabs it and, and leaves. And I said, no, 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 you've got to load music on it. So he picks it up as though he's going to download music like right from the device. I was like, no, 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 no. You got to do it on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes back to the computer and he just starts like doing stuff on the computer. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, how do you, I'm like, no, you got to get the cable, plug it in, buy the music and then drag it over to the device. <laughs> and he's right. like, forget it. I'll just take my smartphone. So, uh, so that's my experience. With how many songs, how many songs can you have on a Zoom? It's a lot. I mean, it's, it's I, like I don't thousands. even know, it's 32 gig or 64 gigs. So oh, you can okay. have thousands and thousands of songs. But I do think there is something interesting about like having a device that you have to decide ahead of time, like this is what I'm going to be listening to mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. versus like having like millions of things at your fingertips and not being able to decide. I do kind of miss that. Yeah, there is something about that. that yeah. Is that know. why, is that one of your reasons for preferring the Zune over yeah. like uh Yeah, Because yeah. then you can listen to albums and stuff. Yeah, and know? then it's Just, like, yeah. I want to listen to this I album see. and then drag it on there instead of like being distracted yeah. by all this stuff and playlists and shuffling and radio Sort of the lost and... art of like listening to the artist's expression throughout the entire album. I, I, see, I'm a, I'm a big, I like, like that. I'm a big vinyl guy too, okay. where it's like, I will listen to the whole side A, flip it over and listen to the whole side B and I want to hear the songs in context. Right. You know, versus like just having a playlist. Like DC of Talk hits. Supernatural. I mean, the exactly. entire. Exactly. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. Where you just listen to. It was to... pretty good. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was no Jesus freak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You but know, but was... if you just listen to like Red Letters yeah. or something by itself, you right. miss the context of the disc. Supernatural. Supernatural. That one was good. So. I did. Anyway, sorry. We oh, and then I want to give a shout out to yeah. the guy on Twitter who gave me his old Zune HD because I tweeted about wanting to buy one and they're like surprisingly oh, cool. expensive. And a guy on Twitter, I, I don't know his name, maybe I can find it and put it in the notes, but he uh, he reached out and was like, I have one, do you want it? And he just sent it to me for free. That's so cool. Which is awesome of him. Nice. What a nice guy. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, my stuff that's good this week, I don't feel like we've talked about Star Trek enough yet in this episode. <laughs> Uh, I've actually been rewatching uh, Next Generation, which was, it's a show, that was popular like back when the Zune was popular. Um, <laughs> what? No, no, no. It was the, the next generation was before Zune, right? Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, there we go. Not, it was like eighty nine. Oh, that was so a joke. It was a, it joke. was a joke. Oh, it was a joke. I get it. Yeah, that's all right. Right. Um, okay. Okay. But no, I've I've been uh, I've been I watched I liked it a lot as a kid, and that's like you know of all the Star Treks, I watched the original series a little bit. Mm -hmm. Next Generation is the one that I grew up with, and then I tried watching a little bit of Voyager, which was okay. I never really got into Deep Space Nine. No. Um, but it, it's cool, and it, it's weird how. Some of the episodes, when you go back and rewatch them, they're, like, so corny and terrible. And, like, the first two seasons are awful. But then, you know, I'm in, like, the third and fourth season now. And there's just some some really great episodes and, like, the character of mm -hmm. Picard and the character of Data and how they kind of work in this, like, debates over, like, his, his sentience and what is humanity and stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's good sci-fi. Yeah. So it's good sci-fi. I grew up with that, too. My experience with Star Trek is I've watched all the movies... And basically none of the TV shows. Uh -huh. And you know, I used to watch some of the old original series, like it was on Saturday mornings yeah. or whatever, and yeah. I'd see an episode here or there. And I've watched an occasional Next Generation. But I tried to watch Next Generation, and the first couple seasons are very, like, bad. Is, yeah. is that the word? Next it's Generation, like sort the, of, the first two seasons are, like, awful. Oh, it's, okay. like, surprising it's that it actually They're, they're sort better, of episodic, yeah. right? Like, so it's kind of... If I were to watch it, should yeah, I start at season three? or? Is so it... here, here's my advice. I would say start from the beginning... Only because one of the best episodes is Yesterday's Enterprise, which is where the Enterprise C comes through a time warp. Mm. And there's a sort of terrible storyline from the first season that gets sort of retconned through that episode. One of the characters comes back. And that's a great episode. And to sort of feel the impact of that episode, you kind of need to know some of the backstory. So it's worth watching 23 bad episodes to watch. 46 bad episodes for <laughs> the first two seasons. <laughs> But there is something yeah. really, I mean, nostalgic about all the all that bad stuff. Yes, because I really enjoyed watching all that when I was a kid. Like yeah. I would, I would tape it on VHS. I'd Same. come home. John Luke Picard, Riker was my hero. Yeah, he had the best beard. He had your beard. Yeah. The same and, and beard it seems like you're. But he doesn't have the beard. Is that something you're doing? Is that well? A that's Riker the other thing. thing. First two seasons, no <laughs> Riker beard. Third oh, that's right. Riker's beard appears. Well, that's it. And, you know, that's actually not a coincidence at all. Yeah, yeah. That's become a like a, yeah. a saying now that Riker's like beard. they'll say it. Well, yeah. no, they'll say a show What's... really grew its beard in season three or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the opposite beard. of jumping the shark. Yeah, it's you the either opposite. jump the it shark is. or the yeah. beard, the beard. Of, of Riker. Yeah. yeah, I will have mentioned. What's What's also just, I tried rewatching some of the original series ones also, and the Next Generation does this also in certain episodes, but I think it's like this obsession Gene Roddenberry had. The first like five episodes of the original series. 
the plot description of everyone is the Enterprise encounters a godlike being in space. <laughs> and it's just, it's like different beings, but they're all, they all just have like magical powers. Right. And it's weird because I feel like Next Generation eventually became more like solid sci-fi and like aliens and technology and sort mm -hmm. of like philosophically based. And the original sort of. series, it's all like space magic. It's like they yeah. can all just like make things appear well, it's like and disappear. Q. It's kind like, of like yeah. Q, right? Exactly. So Q yeah. is like space magic, and that's in the first season, yeah. right? First, first two seasons. Q and yeah. on or Q is just it? yeah. Okay, that's where it came from. I and don't Whoopi, know why Whoopi Goldberg came. I from wish that too. I, during the whole Q and on thing, I don't know why they didn't. I think it would have been like a good video for somebody to make get John Delancey and have Q uh, devout <laughs> Q and on. You know, like, disavow, like, have, yeah, yeah, disavow. Yeah, yeah. That's a good have idea. Have Q condemn Q and on. The God in space was even the plot of the fifth movie, I think. Yes. Well, and one of my favorite right. lines, <laughs> excuse me, what does God need with a starship? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up with that stuff. Yeah. I love Star Trek. I still love Star Trek to this yeah. day. I haven't watched it. But we did start watching the first, um, the first show with my kids. And my kids aren't scared of anything. They're like super about all the stuff, like Lord of the Rings, not afraid of orcs, you know, Harry Potter, not afraid of Voldemort. But, like, we watched Star Trek. And for some reason, those first episodes of Star Trek were kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. And Something, I think it's because there's morality in it. There's, like, sure. this morality tale sort of happening. I always find old... old things from decades ago like just unsettling like yeah there's something about there's it something there's about a weirdness to there's it. a weirdness yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure yeah it's just like old sci-fi we i think we were talking about this yesterday it's like there's old sci-fi and when you read it it doesn't have the same kind of feel as other sci-fi it's yeah. kind of like darker or there's something weird there's something ten there's some tension there since we've already crossed the line into talking about star trek this whole episode what are your guys' thoughts on the reboots i have i've watched <clears throat> the first three episodes of picard and i like it so far but uh, I think I'll finish watching it after I watch Next Generation. And there's Discovery. I, I also. haven't watched Discovery yeah. or Enterprise was one of the ones from a few years ago, which I didn't like. And I haven't yeah, watched I like the animated ones. one. Or there's like there's Lower Decks, which is like a comedy oh, animated the cartoon, series. Yeah. And then there's a like Nickelodeon <laughs> kids animated Star Trek now also. Oh. And there's the but, there's the puppet version too. There's that. Oh, is there really? <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> He's all excited. Oh, that, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. That was a joke. Remember. <laughs> Picard um, sock puppet. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I would like to give Discovery a chance because I've heard a lot of people like it and Tig Notaro's in that one and I think Tig Notaro's What about the fantastic. movies? What about the J.J. Abrams? So I thought they were good, but I, I only saw the first two of them. I think there's three of them yeah, now. Yeah, so you didn't see the worst yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, so I like Chris Pine mm -hmm. a lot. And so I think he did a good job as Captain Kirk. Yeah, and I thought he was so, good. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. And then what's his name from Heroes? <laughs> oh, yeah. The Asian guy. No, Spock. Oh, What's no, I'm not the Asian guy. Yeah, <laughs> Spock. He's not Asian, is he? I thought the Asian Masi guy was... Uh, I was mixing it up. Is that the one you were thinking of from Heroes? Yeah, but he's yeah. not the Asian guy. Masi, they're no, different uh, people. They don't look alike. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's true. Zachary, Zachary Quinto. Quinto. Yeah, Quinto. Him. Yeah. Quinto or Quinto? Quinto, Quinto, whatever. <laughs> it's, Quinto. it's Quinto. It's one of those Asian names that messes you up. <laughs> hey, do you have something that's good that you yes. want to talk about? If you guys want to talk about it, sure. We, uh, so I, I couldn't decide really either. I might have two. But the one the one that I really like right now is one that uh, is um, Little Pilgrim's Progress. So every year I read this to my kids. And it's something that uh, I think every parent should read to their kids. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress obviously is like the one of the best-selling books of all time. It's like a total Christian classic. But there was a, uh, somebody rewrote it in the 1950s to kind of be more accessible for kids. Um, this lady, Helen. And I can't remember her last name. Just tell them. Helen. Yeah. And uh, so young Just go to your Smarter. bookstore and say, excuse me, do you have any books by, by Helen? Helen? <laughs> yes, that's right. Helen L. Taylor. Helen. Maybe. Uh, yeah, somebody write it down. So anyway, but Young Pilgrim's Progress, awesome. Gives you kind of like this, uh, for especially for kids kind of, and for adults too, but it kind of gives you this framework to kind of deal with as far as the straight and narrow path, like what it looks like to kind of veer off the path. And so theologically, it's really encouraging. Obviously, he was a Puritan. Bunyan was a Puritan. So we talk about that, but... Um, I just really like it. So that's the one thing. Read it to my kids every year. And then... Uh, let's Is there see. any space magic in that? So there's uh, other kinds of... I mean, like, you know, there's like moral stuff. Have but you guys no ever read magic. it? Do you guys ever read the original? Yeah. Okay, you have. Of course you have. I don't know why I'm... Yeah, but no space magic. Was that a joke? Oh. It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. It is funny. Laugh. I am. Anyway, Please so. clap. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Pilgrim's Progress. Cool. It's good. Nice. We'll just stick with that one. How about that? All right, now let's talk about 
Jared Lamaster. Hey Babylon Bee fans, today's episode is sponsored by Private Internet Access, America's number one virtual private network, or VPN for short, obviously. Look, even if you use incognito mode, your internet service provider is storing your browsing data, and many times they're selling that information. But Private Internet Access, or PIA for short, because those are the first three letters of Private Internet Access, can help. PIA encrypts and reroutes your internet traffic through one of its own servers, hiding your data from your internet service provider or network admin. And with servers in over 75 countries, you can get unrestricted access to geo-blocked content around the world. PIA comes with easy-to-use apps and browser extensions for all devices, a rock-solid privacy policy, open-source security, advanced customization settings, and it was just ranked the fastest VPN in the world by PCMag. Those nerds know what they're talking about. And if you sign up with PIA right now, you can take advantage of a special deal only for Babylon Bee listeners and viewers. Get 83% off now. That's so much more inexpensive than virtually every other VPN on the market. And if you get it right now, you can take PIA's 30-day risk-free challenge. You can try it out for 30 days and see if you like it. If not, you can return it for a full refund. So click on the link in the description and try out the best VPN on the planet, completely risk-free. Just don't look at porn. And now it's time for the Babylon Bee to ask, who is this guy Ooh. or girl? Uh, my stuff that's good for this week is Jared the Master <laughs> <laughs> and his Russian accent. Oh. So you're a worship leader at a big church. Mm-hmm. Um, how many fire and water metaphors do you use like on a weekly basis? Usually, um, at least a couple. Yeah. At least a couple. Yeah. Yeah. We need to bring the fire and, and the water too. Yeah. (laughs) Together. I mean, as, as people that are worshipers. It's a yin yang thing. Yeah. Now, uh. I want to. The fire to get out of control. When mm. the Babylon Bee first launched, we did a lot of worship leader jokes about skinny jeans mm. and V-necks, and it feels like that's out now. Is that out? What's the what is the style? What's <laughs> like, the current yeah, state what, of fashion? What's, you mean what's what the uni- what's the uniform? Yeah, yeah. What's the yeah? Is this uh, is this like backwards hat? Yeah, I mean, I guess flannel like shirt. so a flannel. Yeah, we try flannel to. Shirt. Yeah, I think the I think for other churches that I've seen the really really like hot ones, the super like sexy ones, like sexy churches. Like, <laughs> Where are those? Get, I would like to join. <laughs> <them>. <laughs> No, there's been some, and they wear like the long, they're still wearing kind of the long shirts with like, you know. Oh, like a long, okay. Like, but maybe like that's swoop, not true. Is that swoop neck? Yeah, sort of the hipster swoop neck. Okay. Yeah. Can you wear the hat in church or is it still like, in the old days it was like, take your respect, hat off. you take your hat off in church. So I've got some people. I wear my hat all the time. Even in church? I do. But Blast people, for me, Josh. I know, especially people, in church. <laughs> yeah, especially. Yeah, that's I, right. I have a memory at PFB when growing up the church uh, uh, that I grew up at. I was standing in the pews and I stood up and, you know, we were sitting with all the high schooler. I was a high school, sitting with the high schooler. And I stood up and I was wearing a hat and the, an old man behind me taps me on the shoulder and he goes, yeah. you show respect and take that hat off, boy. Yeah. Boy, good for him. It's like a core yeah. memory. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm, pretty sure he's still, I'm pretty sure he still attends. But yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I've had guys come up and talk to me about my hat before. Really? Okay. Yeah, they're like, you know, in the Bible it says, and I'm like, yeah. do not wear you're a right. Hat. So I've kind of, I've kind of like split the difference. I take it off when I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> so you worship yeah. with it on yeah. and then you go okay now we're going to talk to God and you yeah. take off the hat well, yeah, it's, what were it's you doing during a, the worship then? you're like this yeah. isn't disrespectful at all but I yeah. should take it off to pray <laughs> yeah. this is kind of disrespectful I mean it is let's just be guys <laughs> let's, let's draw a line somewhere yeah yeah. so I gotta have a hat on mm. but anyway so I don't know there's not there's not much else I think flannels jeans yeah mm. a suit what's yeah. your position on worship leaders and backup singers like making up these like vocal fills in between things like because we'll be singing a song and then, yeah. and then it'll you know it'll go to like, kind of the instrumental until you get to the next verse and the, the girl will be like oh and you are so worthy jeans <laughs> yeah that's right yeah and uh, uh, <laughs> what's your position on that do you guys do that yeah so we do and it depends on the culture i think okay. and it depends on what kind of it depends on sort of like what kind of um I feel music. weird because I feel like I don't know if I'm supposed to be singing along with that and I just yeah. don't know. No, you are. No, okay. it's, everyone does the films. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone does the runs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if not, are we just supposed yeah. to be looking at her going like, oh, that was pretty good. Wow, they should put like, those on the screen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah. Anyway. No, I do think um, we... You know, so I my philosophy is to kind of let these people be the leaders that they are. And so some, sometimes what they do is they use the the kind of melody that they are singing to encourage the people. They'll say something to the people through a melody or something like that. And some people do it really well. And so I try to allow those people to kind of be who they are. 
Um, and it, it really depends on what kind of music you're doing. If you're doing gospel or whatever, it really fits. So oh, like sure. we do yeah. a lot of kind of like pseudo gospel, like the, the kind of Maverick City stuff. And so um, we do have that. We have a lot of diversity and stuff so on our team. Okay. And so we just, we do allow that to happen. But I don't know. I try not to. I try, when I do those runs, I try to do them vocally. Just like, hey, so anyway, guys, guess what we're doing right now? We're mm. worshiping Jesus. That's what we're doing. So, um, yeah. What do you have against hymns and organs? <laughs> uh, nothing. Nothing. Okay. I do like a hymn. Okay. Yeah. You just do don't like, play them. I do sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I'm I do. Just, I, yeah, I'm I not do trying sometimes. to be overly confrontational yeah. here. No, I mean, do you I'm update just saying, the hymn whoa, and make it whoa. a little... No. Yeah, you add you make it a little more no, rock. See, that was like a few. That was like ten years ago. Like everyone was updating the hymns yeah. and putting a chorus in and stuff like that. That's sort of passe now. I think mm. it's very passe. People, yeah. people definitely like just the hymn. Like, and in fact, if you can do a hymn with just an organ and some voices, people love okay. That. All right, so you're not yeah against that. All right, no. So you've acted in some Christian films. Uh, you ever met Kevin Sorbo, Kirk Cameron? Uh, no, I've met people who know both of those okay. guys. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, never, never met those guys. But I have worked in some Christian cinema before, and uh, stuff you're proud of or not proud of. Or... Yeah, I mean some of, some of the stuff. Well, the most recent stuff has been has I've been, been kind of proud. Yeah. yeah, like the guys. Uh, let's see, Nefarious. There's a couple guys, Chuck and Carrie. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Sorry, Carrie Solomon and Chuck Koselman. I think that's what mm-hmm. you say. Yeah, They're yeah. like two directors. You know those guys? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've worked with those guys a couple times now. And I'm proud of both of those movies. Okay, so like good. Unplanned and Nefarious, those are both really cool. Yeah, great. And then Turnaround Jake was good, and we sold that to Pure Flix. And, oh, cool. You yeah. know, got to meet a- David Arrow White, but not I didn't meet him then. I met him at the, the premiere of Unplanned, so it was kind of funny. I was like, hey, you oh. bought our movie. He's like, oh, yeah, that's my little movie. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure he even remembered me. So <laughs> he pretended like he did. And, you know, Christian he's an shot, actor. Yeah. He's an actor. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I've been in a couple things, and I do like working in Christian stuff because some of the times, like a lot of times, it becomes like this conflict. Like you can't do stuff as a Christian. Like there's things that you're not allowed to do. Like that the was, jokes he tells on the weekly. Yeah. Notes. No. Mostly that's only, very one, dark. only one yeah. or two of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are the ones where the commenters. I thought this was a Christian channel. <laughs> <laughs> there are some of those. I've been reading some of the comments lately. There's some. There's yeah. some. There's some really angry people out there. <laughs> Dead gummit. Here's a question that's written down. Has a deaf actor ever played a prank on you? <laughs> yes. So we ask all our guests. Uh, do you? Yeah. yeah, that's kind of a standard. Our normal. Yeah, so I should watch the podcast more. Anyway, but yeah, so Troy, Troy Cot, what's his name? Troy Kotzer? Is that his name? Troy don't, Kotzer. Don't worry, he won't be listening to this. <laughs> he won't be able to hear it. Oh, man. Yeah, so I was in a play with Troy Kotzer. Troy Kotzer, who is not, I think he's getting a, and this is going to sound like a name dropping, but he was, he's getting a, he got nominated for an Academy Award this year. Do you really? Wow. Yeah. So he's just, he's just up. For like what? Right now for supporting actor. That's amazing. And he was in The Mandalorian and stuff. He played one of the, the same oh, people. Oh, awesome. Anyway, so he was teaching me how to do sign language uh, because I was in this play that required sign language and, and uh, it's a musical actually with deaf actors and hearing actors together. Mm. Yeah creating a musical and anyway so he was teaching me how to say nice to meet you and he was going to introduce me to his wife who's also this beautiful actress she's this deaf actress and she's been in a bunch of stuff so anyway he uh, teaches me how to say nice to meet you and i go up and i say it to her i'm like nice to meet you and she just like she she like freaks out and she like grabs my hands and she's like no no. And I was like, we don't do that here. What did yeah. I say? And so Troy's behind her, like rolling around on the ground laughing. <laughs> like he's like laughing. I'm like, what did you do? What did you do? And he goes, and, and so it turns out he, he told me that it's, it's nice to, you know, have sex with you is what, is what he told <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was funny. I mean, it was <laughs> funny. Was funny. Yeah. But she's probably sick of that guy. joke because it probably... He probably she, yeah, she probably gets it all the time. Yeah. I guess. yeah, Joy probably <laughs> plays that joke on everybody. I don't know why you're telling that story here. I thought this was a Christian show. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so true. It's offensive. Has a quadriplegic actor, like one of those that has no arms or legs and is just a torso, <laughs> Isn't ever, that a ever suffle, played a, ever played a yeah. prank on you? That's not necessarily <laughs> quadriplegic. Yeah. No, I've never... That's never happened. I was just, Except for that one yeah. time. As a blind well, actor? You had a deaf yeah. story, so I was just gambling on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love how these questions... Who wrote these questions? I love how they're all like obvious setups. 
Did you used to have a Walking Dead podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Do you happen to own a bunch of swords and carve wooden Gandalf smoking pipes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, these are these are kind of yes no answers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you really do that? You carve Gandalf yeah. pipes. That's yeah. Cool. So How'd like with the long that? stem, kind of cool. like yeah. kind of curvy stem. Yeah. I don't know. I just kind of got into it. I decided. Nice. I looked at it and I was like, I think I could try to do that. I like I like doing woodworking and stuff. Oh, cool. So that's awesome. a lot of fun. Very cool. It's a nice little side hobby. All right. Well, we're going to talk to Jarrett more in the subscriber lounge. In the meantime, we've got an interview with Giannis Pappas. Yeah, woo, hilarious which comedian. Which is a hilarious comedian. Yeah. It was a hilarious interview. So. Uh, yeah, he's got a great podcast also called Long Days with Giannis Pappas, which was just given a strike by YouTube. <laughs> yes. So you got to go support him on that. And, um, you know, he has live stand updates. You check him out. Um, and if you haven't watched the sketch yet about uh, that we used Giannis Pappas for. Oh, yeah. He played Hunter Biden, Joy of Painting. Yeah. Maybe we'll start with that. Why don't we watch that sketch and then we'll jump into the Giannis Pappas interview. Here we go. Please, before you let Russia invade... The Ukraine, please get my money out of there. Do what you have to do. Oh. Okay. Yeah, bye. I got to go, big guy. Hi. I'm Hunter Biden. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you to the joy of painting. Painting has brought me so much joy in life. It feels like I have a job, which is new for me. So I hope you'll paint along with me at home. You definitely want to start with a nice, clean, brush. So just give me a second, okay? Let me get my brush. <sighs> Whoa! Woo, mama! Yeah, just blew my nose real quick. Uh, Van Gogh style. Here's your clean brush, and we have your nice... White's my favorite color. Yeah, those are, that's good oil. Okay, so you start, and you, so we're gonna start some nice white mountains. We just put those in there. Very simple. Much like joining the board of Burisma. You don't need any formal experience to be a painter. I started painting last year, and my stuff's already selling for $75,000. And it's definitely not because I'm the president's son. And that's why it feels so good. It's all me. Now, we're gonna use some nice gray like my dad's hair to add some happy clouds up here. Look at that. Remember, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Like when I got a stripper pregnant in Arkansas. Happy little accident. And when I lost my laptop, one of them, full of emails with the Chinese. And when I lost my other laptop, that one was full of sex tapes. Happy little accident. And when my dad botched the withdrawal from Afghanistan, those were hundreds, perhaps thousands, of happy little accidents. Now, I need to clean my brush again. <laughs> yeah, now we're ready to paint. Okay, we're gonna put some trees right under these clouds. You start the night with a little white cloud, and then at the end of the night, you wanna come down and you do a little tree, if you know what I'm talking about. I like to think of trees as our friends, some happy little tree friends. And I like to think of my brother's widow as my girlfriend. Well, at least until I met a younger, hotter lady that I married, but I did name our son Bo after my ex-girlfriend's former husband, who was also my brother. It's a little complicated. And voila, we're finished. Just like that. Look at this. Two happy mountains. Of course, we got our happy little trees right here and some, and some clouds. That's clouds there. Uh, I wanna thank, of course, China for giving me the money to make this show possible. Now I've gotta go because I gotta order some more paintbrush cleaner. <laughs> Why is there Parmesan everywhere? Was I eating spaghetti on the floor again? Uh, has anyone seen my new laptop? We should all agree that parents have a fundamental right to direct the upbringing of their children. But this right is under increasing attacks from public school indoctrination. Many schools have enacted policies that allow minor students to change their name and pronouns at school without parental consent. Our friends at Alliance Defending Freedom are challenging this indoctrination and threat to parental rights, but they can't do it alone. They need your help. Preserving parental rights protects the future of our children, and that is why it is vital that you join us in supporting ADF. Just go to adflegal.org slash Babylon B and make a tax-deductible donation to ADF's Freedom Fund to ensure they have the resources necessary to continue their challenges in court, all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary. We've seen what happens when Americans stick together. We can make a difference, and with your gift to ADF, we can help protect parental rights. 
join us. Please go to adflegal.org slash Babylon B and make your donation today. That's adflegal.org slash Babylon B. And now for another interview on The Bee Weekly. So what, uh, so you're from Brooklyn, growing from, up in Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, the diverse liberal Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, Brooklyn is weird, though, because there are areas, like, that are, like, very, like, urban and poor, and then there are areas that are, like, real, like, up-and-coming and beautiful. So when someone says they're from Brooklyn, it's like there's people that have completely different experiences living, like, Which a mile from you? each other. <laughs> I, I grew up, yeah, it's very true. And Brooklyn is like a, the whole world crammed into yes. a borough. It really is. Like, by the time I was six or seven, I had heard every language. I could identify the difference between a Pakistani and an Indian, which is like, you have to be a phenotype expert to do that. But, like, I could just do it <laughs> by dialect. Um, you meet everybody. You see everything. You're exposed to everything. I grew up in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Which was like, that was like the... Um, it's a little more hipstery now, isn't it? Now like, it's like, yeah. Because yeah. I, I lived in Brooklyn Heights for a while, but that's like the nice, like, Huxtable <laughs> like house <laughs> that neighborhood. Is, yeah, that's the Huxtable. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly where it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn Heights was always like, that was like considered the Beverly Hills of Brooklyn. Yeah. I grew up in Park Slope, which was kind of like a little, it was originally Irish. First, it was like Brooklyn used to be where people had their summer homes. That's why they have such beautiful brownstones. Like rich people used to, like that's when the world was smaller. And they were like, I'm going on vacation. And they just hopped on a boat and like rowed across the river. And they were like, wow, we're in the Hamptons. Because you know? <laughs> it was just farther. And uh, so there's a lot of beautiful homes there. But Park Slope was... Uh, at the time I grew up, was probably the most socioeconomically diverse neighborhood in the country, and ethnically diverse and socioeconomically diverse. Because all the the um, the what do you call them? They're boomers now. Boomers. Uh -huh. I guess they used to be uh, hippies. They moved there, so like like they they were the ones that kind of replace the Irish cops and stuff that were there and the working class that replaced the really rich people who were like, we're moving farther out, you know, as white flight just continued. Yeah. So just, I guess it's going to space now. <laughs> <laughs> Hampton, the New Hamptons will be space. <laughs> will be Mars. <laughs> so growing up in New York City area, did you grow up, uh, like, wh when did you get into stand-up and, like, were you exposed to it young? Did you go out to see shows and stuff like that oh. around those guys? No, yeah, I got, it, I got into it after college after I realized that, like, the, my, the, I wanted to be a CIA agent just to meet women, and that was just not. How did that good. go? It didn't go good. I went to school in DC at the American University. Oh, okay. And I went to Miami on spring break, and I just had this vision of me at the bar telling a girl I was a Secret Service agent. And that's why I was like, maybe I'll be a Secret Service agent. And then I was like, oh no, I'm, Flower I'm a mess up. Sorry, I forgot we were Ellen rules. I'm a mess up. <laughs> the only thing I've ever been good at is being funny. Like I was a class clown, I was getting in trouble. I was always a rascal. You know, I had to do ninth grade twice because I just didn't go to class. I was making people laugh. And so it's the only thing I have. <laughs> Very different from my brother who went to Georgetown, Oxford, Tufts. Uh, and I'm forgetting one. He got a lot of useless degrees. Now he, you know, he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so did you start out doing stand up in New York? And what was that scene? I started like? in New York. Yeah, I started in New York. The scene was um, that used to be the only scene. It was like New York and L.A. And New York was considered like the the that's where you get good. That's where you perform. And then you come to L.A. and you just like take your soul and you're like, how much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I is bitter. Who do you want me to be? You know, that's why you're out here on this trip. Yeah, you're trying to sell your soul sell wherever your soul. you can. I love it. Then you then you get your fifty million dollar check, and then you find Buddha. After that, conveniently, <laughs> then you become Jim Carrey. Going, this is all. This is nothing. This. Uh, I don't know. I'm like, it's nice that you know. After you got three hundred million in the bank, you finally decided to get spiritual. You had a whole, you had a plenty of opportunity before that when you were in Canada or on your climb up to be like, you know what? This is all. Nothing's real. But now, conveniently, that he can sit in his spaceship of a house and paint all day, he's the Buddha, and life is meaningless. 
Well, it's weird in comedy. I feel like a lot of celebrities, they go through that phase even before they get rich and spiritual. They go through the phase where they get rich and then they're more miserable than they ever were. They just go through this like dark, like I'm rich and I'm not happy phase, which I see that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think in some ways it's because of the compromises you have to make. And also, yeah, you realize after you climb that hill, you realize, oh, like I'm not surrounded with a lot of good friends. I've had to, I don't know who I am anymore. And yeah, so my shower is a little nicer, but is that really? <laughs> and crying yeah <laughs> yeah my it's beautiful not, shower. better setting to sit yeah. In happiness, yeah happiness is the company you keep you yeah know, not, you know if you're sitting with the, somebody you hate in a you know in mr chow's or whatever you're gonna have a bad time what is the sushi gonna flood out the fact that you hate this person and you don't know who you are and all the <laughs> all the things you had to do in epstein shower to get where you are <laughs> is the sushi gonna fix that is that gonna wipe that memory away no but there's some happy you know normal Normal couple sitting somewhere and, you know, who's having a great meal at Cracker Bar or whatever. The food is crap, but, you know, they're in good company. <laughs> so... Good, good endorsement Happiness for Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> the, Cracker Barrel. The food is crap, but you're happy here. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, what circles were you running in at that time when you first got started? What, what other comics were you performing with? Yeah, I got came up cool with... cool stories about that? Yeah, I came up with a cool crew, man. And that's the thing about comics is, uh, especially stand-ups, you know, now comedy's opened up. We don't have the monopoly on funny that we used to have. Now it's like some kid with a camera. But back then it was like, if you were funny, you got into stand Stand up, and the great thing about stand up comics is we do this thing where we perform. We, we're really the only ones who are genuinely in touch with sort of the zeitgeist. We feel it. Politicians are up there doing this, and they're just full of, they're not, you know. Yeah. They're just thinking, we're actually, we have to like really win the people over, like on a visceral level. So uh, you, it's a, you become like a, it's like a brotherhood or sisterhood or other non-binary hood or whatever it is. <laughs> it's uh, just people together, you know, but we come from all, <laughs> you, you get this bond and you come from all walks of life. And, um, you know, I always, it's, I always thought like when you see us walking down the street, you'd see like a housewife, it would be like me, Nate Bargatze, Dan Soder, you know, uh, Chris, Stef Chris Stefano, people from, you know, couples from Brooklyn, Nate's from Nashville, he's from, you know, uh, from conservative background, Christian conservative his whole life. I'm, a, you know, more of a, le I come from a left-leaning family in Brooklyn. It's like when you see us walking together, you're like either these guys are going to rob a bank or they're comics, you know? <laughs> it's like a housewife, a fat kid, a skinny kid, a black kid, a white kid. So it's really like... Um, it's a heist movie. It's like yeah. a heist movie, or they're going to do some sets. <laughs> <laughs> For chicken fingers. <laughs> Have you ever been paid in chicken fingers? Oh, yeah, dude. That's how comics oh, get paid yeah. most of the Mostly time. It's chicken, oh, sometimes yeah. a drink ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before the internet... Um, oh yeah, they they give you that whole just happy to be here. Thing. You're ha you know just like come on, it's you for know the exposure. Yeah. And you're like, yes, the waitress. You're like, how much did you make? Like she's like a thousand dollars. You're like, how much did you make? You're like, I made twenty five bucks, and then I ate, and I had to pay half price for the food. So I'm like, I got I netted like seven bucks. Yeah, because that's like <laughs> I had to awkwardly walk up to the guy that runs the show and remind him to pay me at the end. <laughs> but you still you still owe me some money. Like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you yeah if you do some of those shadier shows out there. They're like, ah, oh, we didn't really, the audience, we didn't, you know, it didn't really, and you don't exactly have like a lawyer tailored contract. Yeah. <laughs> it's just some phone call by some guy named Mickey who lives in Canarsie, Brooklyn. And, <laughs> you know, you're just like, all right, I guess, I guess I'll take uh, ha half of my money. I'm just happy to be working. Now, you mentioned coming up with uh, guys, you know, different political leanings. You were raised in a more sort of left-leaning uh, background. Nate comes from a more conservative background. What I love about both your podcast and your stand-up, you talk about politics and kind of what's going on, but you do it in a way that you seem to like alienating both sides and at times supporting both sides. Yeah. And it's interesting because I know in, like, when you're special, you kind of get to the political stuff kind of later on. You do the other jokes and you get the crowd on your side. And then I feel like that's... It works because then the crowd, they, they know they can laugh. Whereas when you go in hard for one side or the other, it just seems like 
that's what's happening on the mainstream shows right now. Like the late night shows are all either one team or the other. It's kind of gross. Yeah. But in comedy, like yeah. it's more fun. I feel like like you always kind of want to be a little contrarian, don't you? Absolutely. That's 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 what humor is. I mean, if I just went up on stage and went like, racism's bad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Being mean to people is horrible. Are you with me? I mean, it's, that's not comedy. Yeah. But if I went up and I said, here's what's great about racism. Yeah. And then I had some great <laughs> <Yes>. jokes. <laughs> you know, the, being funny is saying the inappropriate thing. Yeah. You know, that... Uh, you know, we're class clowns. Like, I didn't get in trouble in school because I was saying the right thing or at the right time. It's always being contrarian because our job is to keep people honest, including ourselves. We're humans. We have this fascist tendency in us. We have all these flaws in us. And I think the jester's role, the traditional jester, is to just keep us honest, remind us we're human, connect on that level. And um, that that supersedes party lines, you know. And um, we've been flushed out, which is scary. Because when, when uh, well, I don't mean flushed out like, you know, like a gopher. I mean, I don't mean flushed out. We've been, we've been, what's silent? We're, they're trying to silent. Like, they're, yeah. they're treating us like politicians now. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like everyone's getting treated like a politician. And that's. Uh, and they're trying to assign you to a team, I feel like. They're trying like. to assign it's you like, to a team. Yeah, it's like, like, why can't, why yeah. is it so important to you? Like, when I was growing up, my dad was a Republican and my mom was a Democrat. You know, yep. she was like a, she was like a human rights lawyer and my dad had a business. So it was like, back then it wasn't that big of a, yeah. it was back when more people kind of leaned left, leaned right. And then. The more extremes were the more religious or more like militantly atheist, which in my opinion is like a religion too. Yeah. But everyone was kind of like as far as policy and economics, it was like, you know, even you look at the Reagan administration, they, they, you know, there was Medicare. There was like, they understood in the real world, you have to, you can't just go laissez-faire or you, you know, you can't or it just won't work. In theory, you can go, this is what I believe, but you're like, you know, when you're in, when you're doing it when you're creating policy you have to compromise yeah and um that you know ideas are great but ideas have nothing to do with reality you know i want to you know i want my wife to be chill all the time <laughs> i married her thinking she you know but it's like how did that work out is she chill all the time? that's not chill she's chill <laughs> they, they get a lot of confidence once that ring goes on <laughs> their confidence is gross dude <laughs> Yeah, it's all a ruse, man. It's a ruse. Once you get that ring on, it's like, they start, you know, they start talking too much. <laughs> so with how kind of polarized things have been with like this sort of idea of cancel culture out there right now, do you think that's made it easier or harder for comedy? Like, because... I'm always sort of on the fence about it. Like, on one hand, they are trying to silence people, but it also gives you kind of targets and things to talk about. And stuff I love like it. That. Yeah. yeah. I think comedy's fun again. Yeah. You know, um, I love it. It's, um, you have to just put the fun first. Yeah. And that's why I say when people apologize, I'm like, all right, apologize, but then do it again. <laughs> so I so saw, they make the apology. Oh, one of your podcasts recently, you called that, uh, what was it, doing a Patton Oswalt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kid. <laughs> I mean, how do you? I love do, that line. Yeah, I mean, how do you do that to a, your friend? Yeah, you know, it's like who invited you down to perform, and you're having like it's just a weird thing. And then you make it public. You didn't even text them. For, you know, you yeah. didn't text them and go, "Hey, Dave, I'm going to write this thing." Dave probably, you know, Dave's not really on social media, but like yeah. if he wasn't, you imagine being a friend and seeing that. Yeah, I, mean, I was just hanging out with you, dude, and then you're doing this, like, and to back down to the mob so quickly, like one second you're posting yeah. a picture, and then it's as soon as the backlash hits, we got what a it. snot face. Hey, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, not. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I was friends with him for my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was friends with him. You know, and again, uh, conveniently, I had no problem going down there and performing in an arena, taking a picture next to yeah. one of the greatest comics of all time, getting my posting, chicken fingers and yeah, drink ticket. Yeah, and posting it on my social media, like so. So, and then he goes, "This is my principle." I, as if so, would you have posted that apology if the fans didn't come after you? So then yeah. it's not genuine, and so it's like, why aren't more people just? Just going, you're full of bubble gum. Yeah. We know you're full of bubble gum. Because it's not like you posted that first. It's not like you went down there and was like, Dave, I'm down here so we can talk about issues. <laughs> I only came here because you're learning <laughs> and I want to help you understand how your opinions are antiquated. <laughs> and you got to open your mind. And living in LA has really opened my mind. LA is such a, everyone here doesn't think about themselves at all. <laughs> everyone here, you know, that you make it in this town by just being super empathetic and super listening. 
<laughs> you gotta be more listening, Dave. No, he fir he first posted that like me, me, me photo with Dave being like, look, I'm friends with the goat, yep. you know? And then he got all those comments from maniacs and probably tri Chinese bots. And <laughs> then he posted this like, you know, mea culpa. That's like, you know, we know you can easily see he's full of bubble gum. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little excited here. No, no worries. We'll keep all of that. that yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, we're thinking Sorry, maybe, maybe Jimmy Fallon's going to have to apologize for having you on the Tonight Show. Before. Yeah, he did. You were the first comic on there, right? The first no comic. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's a test <laughs> show. And I bombed. Did you really? I did bomb. Oh, well, not a horrible bomb. If you watch it, you probably wouldn't know. But why? Yeah, his his you, audience you know has such anybody. great taste <laughs> in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 isn't that an honor? Isn't that, isn't that one of the like your booze mean nothing? I've seen what makes you cheer. Like, <laughs> He's a really nice guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah. But yeah, I just picture his writer's room is just like a bunch of kids with crayons going like, <laughs> I put the egg on your face. Yeah, and Jimmy's like, yeah, it's great. We we'll take the eggs and we put them. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll color your face. Yeah, it's be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, I think his writer's room is like out of school. You know, though, when they book you, right, that it's a test show for those shows? I did know. Yeah. So I was, I, at the time, I, w I had a show in Miami. It was a new network called Fusion. Uh -huh. So I'd moved down to Miami. They were owned by uh, Disney, ABC, and Univision. I was trying to do this new network for millennials. And it was interesting because it was like probably the last time a big network like that will be built mm -hmm. because it completely failed and they shouldn't have done it because it, uh, the phone had already taken over you know mm -hmm. and like so they built this like hundred million dollar building in Doral Florida all this money behind it and uh, it just failed quick because like you know kids are on you know they can't get the you can't compete with the eyeballs of Babylon B yeah and, and the like you know so yeah Oh, that, we do need to tell you that this is a test show, so this might <laughs> Oh, this will not air. <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm the perfect guy to have on, because you're like, if we have him on, we know we probably can't use it. <laughs> so let's just check out, let's work on the angles yeah, and yeah. see if the it's chairs look thing. good, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know, I get it, I yeah. get it, yeah. His mic wasn't working the whole time, but we'll get it for the next <laughs> yeah, one. Next one. Yeah. It's funny, because when I went on, I was like, to me, it, it's so funny, because uh, my generation has straddled these two eras. You know, everyone coming after yeah. doesn't even think about The Tonight Show. Yep. But when I came up, I was like, oh my Turn God, it. Tonight Show. And so, even though it was a test show, I was like, can I get the tape? Like, I just, you know, and then I was like, I'll do it again. And it, but, and so when I went out there, I was really nervous. Yeah. It was my first time doing that five minute set where, and I'm a guy who, even if you look at the characters I've done, I, I can't be in the box and I can't, if someone says, hey, you're censored, I'm just like, then I can't, I don't know if I can do this. So I was so nervous yeah, doing Yeah, we told it. you not to say it. I've five, already five. said it, yeah. <laughs> I've already broken the rules. So um, I was nervous and that's why I bombed and because uh, I cared so much about The Tonight Show yeah. and now I don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I try to figure that out too. It's interesting because I, I think we're probably close in age, and I grew up like late night TV was like the. Dude, if we're close in like, age, icon you're drinking baby blood because you look good. <laughs> I mean, where is the adrenochrome slurpee shop that you go to? Is it Tom Hanks's basement? I'll how come are, with how you. Old are you? You're... I'm in my. I'm 45. 45. I'm 39. Yeah, so, yeah. we're not. The, well, we're close. close yeah. yeah, yeah. But you I got good genes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I, I grew up like loving the Tonight Show and late night comedy. And to me, that like format is still what comedy is supposed to be, but it is all shifting to, you know, YouTube and TikTok and, you know, these like short form sketches, some of which I don't even understand what's, you know, on TikTok, like what they are. Right. But what I love, you know, you're doing this show on YouTube now and what the online platforms have done, they've let you kind of do stuff like more independently. Do you kind of like being able to produce that on your own and kind of just say what you want as, until YouTube gets mad about until it? Until they take me down, which they did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it, I, this is the greatest era to be a comic. There's no question. I mean, what would you prefer to go back to the gatekeeper era where, you know, even at the local level, it's some... Um, you know, a bartender booking the show and has power over you or having to go sit uh, with all these networks who are trying to figure out how to make a commercial for commercials. Uh -huh. That's <laughs> that's not comedy. What you guys are doing is comedy. You're, you know, that it's funny. It's for the people. They have a visceral reaction to it. It's not uh, surreptitiously selling you anything. You know, comedy can't surreptitiously sell you anything. That's what we're making fun of. So this is the best era to be a comedian. You know, there's, uh, yeah, there's always 
I love that because that's such an optimist. I hear so many people, you know, that, you oh. know, even on here we talk about, you know, as, as comedy, you know, is it is it dead or is it, you know, under pressure, the people silencing it. But it, it really does kind of give you something to push back against and you have this platform where you're kind of independently in control of it. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And, you know, being a live performer too, here's the thing. This is what really concerns <clears throat> me about the country, just to get earnest for a second, is that what you experience in in reality is not what you experience online. Totally different experience. That is a fabricated experience that people are now thinking is real, that people are like that. You know, I, I like I said, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, you know, um, uh, everything, everything. I come from an open-minded place. I go to a, like a more, a smaller place, closed mind. People are great. It's great. I, I do my jokes, they laugh. You know, I make fun of them, they laugh. You know, I go to New York, I do the same jokes. I, you know, I may tell it a little bit. There's tiny different reactions, but people are people, man. I mean, it's like, you know, you gotta understand, it's like, you know, the, 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 something has happened, it's the dark side of the internet or the algorithms or the social media companies or whatever it is has pulled us farther and farther apart. And it's, it's, it does not represent what's happening when you see people face to face. You know, and um, I don't know, I don't know how to fix that, but it's a big problem. It's like you, nobody's putting themselves in other people's shoes anymore, mm -hmm. and it's ironically the world's opened up more, but people have gotten more closed. It's like even if you take an issue like guns, it's like, yeah, I mean, again, there's the ideal, like yeah, everyone has their ideals, like I want to be able to protect myself, or, or then the other side's going like guns are dangerous, they kill everybody. There's some truth to both, right? Uh -huh. But like. You got to take context into consideration. And the internet has made us like just jettison context. Everything is like this polarized utopia that everyone's trying to achieve that you're like, have you forgotten we're flawed, imperfect people living on a planet? And if you lived, if you lived in the country, you would have a different opinion of guns. And if you from the country lived in the city, like, for example, like if everyone had a gun and open carry in New York, you know, can you imagine what a rush hour would be like? You know, like everyone's jammed in and then someone pushes everyone and everyone just pulls their gut out and it ends like a Quentin Tarantino movie. But then on the flip side, if you don't have a gun and you live where I live, the first thing I did was buy a gun when I moved to the country. It's like, I'm not going to depend on the sh one sheriff <laughs> who lives like 40 miles away. There's also bears and Big trying to kill my dog. But like, yeah, I'm not just going to, if I happen to be targeted by the one crazy killer out there who wants to kill my family, I'm just going to be I'm sorry, I'm a liberal. I don't have it. I'm a liberal. My Twitter looks great, though, as I'm dying. My Twitter looks great. You know? It's like, what is flower bed happen to people <laughs> that they treat each other like a different species yeah. or they treat each other like they're not <laughs> flawed or self-interested. Like everyone, this is a very like puritanical, scary time where everyone's like, you know, in their cults. And it's like, how do we, how do we start talking again without, you know, being pedantic, you know? Yeah. It's so easy to forget that Twitter is such a small fraction of the population and it's all, it's the worst people on the planet, really. Yeah. yeah. You know? And then you start seeing all liberals as being like that rando on Twitter who's, you know, yelling at you for something or another. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like the st they, they make the stereotype into every, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's, you're right, because Twitter's like probably such a small percent and then the other percent, and which is why I'm really, crit what I think is really where the social media platforms have been very hypocritical and evil, borderline evil, is that, you know, they come down on what you say all the time but they don't come down on like the fake accounts and the bots yeah. and because that's good for their engagement. That's good for their numbers. So they're like, we'll look the other way for 10 years till our stock price shoots through the roof. And, <laughs> yeah, it's all know, very selective. Yeah, yeah. And, and all these, I, I, you know, most people have like six accounts. So you released your special on YouTube for free. Well, why'd you do that? And is that the future? And um, did they censor that one or is that one still up? No, that up? one's still up. Oh, cool. That one's yeah. still up. Um, yeah, I did that because um, it's the best way or a very good way to get people to see it. And then for a stand-up comic, you wanna get, it's all about getting those ticket sales. So you just want the visibility. And um, yeah, if you put on Comedy Central, Comedy Central is a great place to hide your special. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a safe for your special. Uh, 
if you have any like social media passwords you don't want people to you, know, you oh, can dude. say them in your <laughs> put them in, in your, your special. Comedy. It's in, you have a, it seems like you have a lot of TV credits, but you've only put your stuff where no one will see yeah. it. <laughs> Alan, but you won't see it. I've done Comedy Central, but you won't see it. Yeah, my career's in a safe box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you're talking about the, the sort of, you know, social media companies, and we're talking about Twitter. Now, with your podcast, which everyone should check out, you. You, were, you had strikes against you recently, right? Yeah. What was the story behind that? You know what happened there? Yeah, so... Um, the first one, they give you a warning, uh -huh. right? So, and then they, then you can appeal it. And then I lost the appeal. And what was the content that they had a problem with? Right. So then I had to like ask on Twitter. I went to, oh, I okay. saw, um, somebody did it. Um, if what's, he repeats it here, we're going to get a strike. On you him. might get a strike. <laughs> <laughs> we have to say this is for, this is for news commentary for and news satire commentary. only. <laughs> I saw that they gave Lex Friedman a strike, who's a friend. I've done his podcast and I was like, he got it over. He went and tagged YouTube help on Twitter. And then they reversed it real quick because I knew he wasn't going to, he doesn't, they must have been a mistake. And then, so I did the same thing. And that's how I found out what the time quote was. They responded to me on Twitter. But only when I tweeted at them did they tell oh. me what the time codes were. Uh -huh. Even in the appeal, they just come back and tell you you failed the appeal. And I, my strike was for bullying. <laughs> and are you harassment. talking to a person when you interact with, or are you just getting like form email responses? Form from, email from from responses. YouTube? Yeah. Form, yeah. Yeah. Form email responses until you do the Twitter thing. Uh huh. And then they respond to you and you can tell that's a person. And then they rejected me again. Then they said they'd look into it and they rejected it again. And they gave me the time codes, which was, which was a mistake because then Rogan saw it. Rogan's a friend and uh -huh. he made it big. And so it's helped me a little bit. Yeah. But, um, uh, the, the two things that it was, was the time codes were ridiculous. The first one um, was uh, a joke I did about the gay pride parade. So I said... <laughs> That's never a sensitive topic. Yeah, <laughs> never. No, that's It's a right beautiful now. event. There's no way to criticize yeah. that. I don't know how you would make a joke. Right, guys, if you're a, co a comic coming up, that is like fair game. I mean, they... <laughs> it's like, that's you start there and then work your way back to what you had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so the joke was really just about like how can we move the gay pride parade tonight so i can explain gay rights to my daughter without having to see your get ready for the beep donkey until before noon <laughs> that's basically it like before the leather show starts like let me get a chance to walk with my daughter and then at night you know so that was the joke so that was the specific flag on that one. The second one starts as my buddy Jared Harvin, who's now kind of on the show. He's like a young, very funny comic, um, and he's black. And the time code that they stamped was him speaking. So I was like, what's that? But then right afterwards, we start talking about Justin Bieber. So I figure it's about that, right? So I've actually emailed them. Now I got to a person, Lucy, if you're watching this. <laughs> Actually, because I want to know. Yeah. Like, I'm a maniac. Yeah. And I want to really challenge them on it. So she actually responded to me, and now I'm pursuing it. I'm like, I want, because they were like, okay, here's what the strike was. I was like, I want to know what the warning was. Tell me exactly what it was. Because, you know, Justin Bieber makes like, who, how much money for YouTube? I mean, he's like, that's, it's the second biggest search engine on the internet. And the first one happens to be Google, owned by both. And, um, you know, he's like, biggest artist in the world. And we did like a little chunk there about his N word videos. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Those, the, you know? We made the jokes. Yeah. yeah. And the whole premise behind it was like, why was he forgiven so quick? Was it because he makes so much money for Usher? Mm -hmm. And we just kind of bashed Justin Bieber a little bit and, um, you know, talked about that. And um, so I think it was that. But they didn't say that, which is interesting. They gave the time code they gave was just Jared saying, you know, I like any type of music. And so I think it was the Bieber thing, but they don't want to admit uh -huh. it. So now that's why I'm pursuing it. I think it's the music thing. It could be the music thing. <laughs> and now they could be like, whoa, 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 Leonard Skinner? Yeah. <laughs> that's a strike, dude. They, they had a Confederate flag on one yeah. of their albums. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I'm being loud. I know you don't like loud. I can tell you. <laughs> because like you're one of those like coiling? comedic genius kind of demure writer guys. And then I come in and I'm like, look at me. <laughs> I have no structure in form. <laughs> And oh, I did it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like when some comics, like you, you'll come in and you'll say, you know, I was a class clown growing up and I was the center of attention. And there's some comics like, I was the quiet introverted kid. And yeah, I was just yeah. like, you know, cerebral well, you the whole time. You guys turn out like the amazing yeah. stuff. 
And then, uh, yeah, we're just like, look at me, whatever it takes, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I was a kid they all thought I was going to shoot up the school. <laughs> you have that bot, dude. You have that bot. Yeah. You either, yeah, you either go one way or the other. Thank God you found comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I didn't find comedy, I'd be working at, like, a Kinko's. But if you didn't find comedy, <laughs> there'd, there'd, be a, there'd be a lot of dead people in the Kinko's. <laughs> <laughs> See, we just yeah. got a strike for that. Yeah. Dude. No way we're not going to get a strike for <laughs> Flower bag. Shooting. Mark this time code because it's going to come back. To us. <laughs> it's going to haunt us. Yeah. Now, were there consequences for your channel when you get strikes? Do they like, what do they do? Yeah. Suspend you, indeed monetize you? Like yeah, so you lose, you know, because you're uh, you monetize, so you lose the income for uh -huh. that week. Um, they also shoot your numbers down. Yeah. That's obvious. You can yep. feel that. But they take you off. Uh -huh. So I couldn't use my account for seven days. Oh, man. So seven days. So the, f the way it works when you read it is the first strike, they uh, they susp suspend you for seven days. If you get the second strike within 90 days, then they suspend you for like a month. And then if you get the third strike within 90 days, they just take your channel down. Oh, man. So, yeah. So that's what they well, do. Good luck on the third strike. <laughs> 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 well, I'm only at one. So. Uh, I grow um, <laughs> And it's a really weird system because anyone can flag you. Yeah. Anyone can flag you and complain. Then I guess the algorithm looks for words or something. They take you down. Then they have a human review it. And by human, they mean like some 19-year-old with purple hair yeah. who just got back for some protest. Yep. Who does just like, who said it? Looks at my face and goes, white man, out. Done. <laughs> take it down. He doesn't have his pronouns in his yeah, description. Yeah, the <laughs> pronouns are in the bio. It's out. And so. Yeah, the manual review always baffles me because the algorithm I get, like the robot's not mm. going to understand the joke. But then when the human comes along and is like, oh, yeah, that is offensive, that always blows yeah. me away. We had our Vaccinate Me Elmo doll commercial, <laughs> and uh, the robot said, this is made for children. Right. So we, it got put moved to kids only YouTube. Oh, wow, that's hilarious. And so, so we said, that's clearly a mistake. <laughs> and, we, and we appeal it. And then a human at YouTube is like, yep, that's for kids. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so yeah, you know they don't even they're not really looking at it too closely. Yeah, that's just, that's I got a weird one on my channel. Like I do like satirical news videos sometimes, and then I, a couple weeks ago I had an email from YouTube and it said, Do you need help? Someone notified us that you have content referencing suicide and self-harm. Sometimes we all have negative thoughts. And the only time I have ever referenced suicide on my channel ever is in like Epstein didn't kill himself jokes. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, so I emailed, I responded to it because that was the first time I ever got it. And I'm like, what is this content was about? And then it just comes back, you know, you can't, no reply to this email. Yeah. So I like that they'll reach out and be like, do you need help? And then if you respond, they're like, no, we're not talking to you. <laughs> There's someone there for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Flower bed. <laughs> I know they have a tough job to do. It's very it's a wide net. I know this is new, but like, yeah, they gotta come up with a better system. Yeah. Maybe start by putting like just saying oh like qualifying for comedy and then just like it's a comedy channel, you know? Yeah. Like as long as I'm not like, you know, doing what Kathy Griffin did. You know, which in my opinion, that's like, yeah, you don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the sitting president. Yeah. Like, oh, like, make an ISIS video. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, even if it's not the president, then. Yeah, that's a little much. Most people. That yeah, you, you, can, yeah. you shouldn't do that. You know, <laughs> shouldn't do that. So it's like, I understand there's always a line, but you got to take, somehow we have to figure out a way to get context back on the, and context is just gone. It's wild. So you're man. not a prop comic. You don't hold up beheaded. <laughs> No, <laughs> she should have. She should have been like prop comment defense. Yeah, that's what she should have yeah. done. <laughs> Kathy Griffin should have been like, "What is that? You know, that's just." And then pulled up other heads and been yeah. like, "That's what I do." It's like her, it's like puppets. Yeah. Like what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. Donna. <laughs> Donna. Yeah, Jeff Donna. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Donna. Donna. Yeah, Carrot Top. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, These guys make a lot of money. <laughs> Man, they Carrot Top and Jeff Donna. It's hot. Pa Polly Shore comes by here all the time. Like. What do you, I don't think it's Polly Shore. What do you mean he comes by here? Like no, not here. Oh, like the comedy club. So oh yeah, yeah. I I met him when I first moved out here because he his mom owns the comedy store. Yeah, 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 that's right. And so he was like involved there for a long time. And when I first moved out to LA, I knew like a producer that knew him and was like, oh, you guys both do comedy. Like you should meet him. So I went down to the comedy store patio to meet him one night. And he and I, I go up to him and I, I sit down and I go, oh, I'm I'm Adam. You know, uh, our, our friend says he goes, oh, nice to meet you. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. And he touched my face. And it made me so uncomfortable. <laughs> and then 
it became like when I moved out here, I was a producer's assistant at Conan's Tonight Show. And it became like I was coming out here thinking he would help me get on stage at the comedy store. And it became apparent he was just trying to use me to like, hey, I need to get some late night appearances again. <laughs> and then you're like, ah, oh, this is how this town yeah, works. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Friendship is, you know, yeah. it's a barter system. Yeah. yeah. All interactions are really like a barter system here. Yeah. yeah. It's not a real place. I really miss Adam Ford. Now, most hate mail that we look at is just a single message that we get that's some crazy person who hates the Babylon Bee for some reason. But this one is kind of an epic saga that I, <laughs> I wasn't 100% following, so I'm kind of curious how exactly this unfolded. This is from someone named Sherry Oppenheim, and she says, I really don't care about your feelings regarding people who are not totally heterosexual, but your part about Amy Snyder was so far over the top regarding your mean, nasty, and anything negative I can think of. You have no right to be purposefully hurtful. It is just not right. So the Babylon Bee support, which is, I guess, just our, uh, our one of our uh, email support team, says, uh, why was it hurtful? <laughs> <laughs> so then we have a message. For, does someone want to read this? She replies oh, sure, to I'll, that. I'll read this. Uh, in answer to your question... Sources claim that the host even gave a clue that this is one of two genders. Oh, I think she's quoting our Babylon Bee story. Okay. There. So she's saying this is what was offensive Maybe to you should read this because I don't know what I'm reading. Okay. <laughs> Sources <laughs> claim that the host even gave a clue that this is one of two genders, but Amy still did not get the question correct. Amy started to answer the question by writing, what is different and unique to each person based upon how they identify because gender is a complex subject with no definitive answer but ran out of room. <laughs> Consequently, Roan Talsma was declared the winner by writing what is female. All right, so this was our Babylon B article that was a Amy Schneider loses after not being able to answer a question about what a woman is. Um, so then this is, her, this is her comment on that. I think gender is two chromosomes, but you detailed insult was over the top. This was not funny. Forcing gender ID on kids is not good. A direct hit on someone very intelligent is also not good. For the most part, I enjoy your humor, but this was not humor. So then the Babylon B support replies, what insults are you referring to? <laughs> About her stupidity not answering a non-question. If you don't see it, I may have to unsubscribe from your site. The Babylon B support, why are you referring to Amy Amy Schneider as her? <laughs> <laughs> Schneider is a man. <laughs> we are not calling Amy Schneider stupid. The trans community refused to answer these kinds of questions. Uh, please note that joke explanations come at a cost. We charge a fee of $100. Where should we send the invoice for this joke explanation? Sherry then replies, Stuff it up, you're a strawberry. <laughs> Amy is an adult. Try to bill me. I quit your site. <laughs> <laughs> the Babylon Bee then sent her a PayPal request <laughs> <laughs> for $100, and I don't think she paid it yet. Oh, man. <laughs> so that's the saga of Sherry and Amy. <laughs> Oh, that's that's wonderful. All right, if it's you amazing. want more hate mail, more crazy stories from Jarrett, uh, and a classic B story of the week and some subscriber headlines, and the rest of the Giannis Pappas interview, well, this is going to be an, a crazy packed episode, uh, become a Babylon B subscriber at babylonb.com slash plans and come join us in the subscriber lounge. For all you freeloaders, we'll see you next week. Coming up next, for Babylon B subscribers. That's when she said, you cannot pull, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's physically impossible. <laughs> His handle is investigate311. <laughs> what was 311? I don't know. <laughs> is it the band? Yeah. The band. I think so. I think it's the band. <laughs> threw a punch and I was like, Kew! and then he threw another punch and I was like, uh, and I was like, what am I, what am I doing? <laughs> I've never fought before in my life. Greek Orthodox is like, yeah, you're, uh, we also have a different Easter. Uh -huh. like, your guy's Easter is like a dress rehearsal for Jesus. <laughs> Another edition of the B Weekly from the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee, reminding you that someone out there knows something about Carmen, and we're going to find them. Transparent aluminum. Yeah. But it was like Star Trek A. <laughs> yeah. A, Enterprise A. I don't know about the Enterprise E. <laughs> I'm telling you.